So in the last lesson on equilibrium, before we do a lot more practice, we're going to cover the changes with Kc and Kp. Um, we need to know that Kc and Kp do change with temperature, but the value itself doesn't change with pressure or concentration. And then we need to actually use Kc and Kp to explain these shifts, to explain why does the equilibrium shift when the concentration pressure changes, and also why does the equilibrium shift when the temperature changes. Now I'm going to start by looking at how pressure affects the equilibrium position. Um, and the first thing we'll do is put together the Kp expression for this. So can we remember what it would look like for this reaction? And hopefully you got that right. Remember the curly brackets, can't have the square brackets because that shows concentration. Um, so we can remember back to AS and GCSE um, with increasing pressure. And remember that pressure favours the side of least moles. So we know therefore that if we added pressure to this system, that actually the equilibrium would shift to the left hand side. But when we come to A2, we have to explain it in a different way. We have to be prepared to explain that, not that it shifts to the side of fewest moles, but why does it shift to the side of fewest moles? So to do that, we've got to think about what actually happens if you increase the pressure to this system. So if we applied more pressure to the whole system, then the value of the partial pressure of NO2 is going to go up. squared, and the partial pressure of this one is also going to go up. So if this goes up but it goes up the square of it and this also goes up, then overall Kp is going to do what? Yep, it's going to increase, it's going to go up. But the point is that Kp can't go up, Kp has to stay at the same value. So therefore, what happens to the equilibrium in order for Kp to stay at the same original value? So currently, Kp is too high a value. It needs to come down. So for it to come down, we need the partial pressure at the NO2, the numerator, to go down. And we need the partial pressure of the N2O4, the denominator, to go up because then one divided by the other will end up being a smaller figure and will go back to being the original figure. So for this partial pressure to go down and this partial pressure to go up, we need the equilibrium to shift to the left-hand side. And that's why it shifts to the side of the fewest moles in order to re-establish the value of Kp to the original value. OK, so I'm just going to run through that again using a different example. So again, if we were to put together the expression for Kp for this reaction, what's it going to look like? Hope you've got that right. So if we were to increase the pressure of the whole system, then each of the partial pressures are also going to increase. So if I increase the pressure of this, then I'm going to end up with the numerator increasing to squared, the denominator increasing, and then the other one increasing as well. So the denominator is increasing more than the numerator. Therefore, what's going to happen to the value of Kp? Kp is going to go down. We know that Kp can't go down. So therefore, in order to re-establish, to make Kp a higher value, going back to a higher value, what actually has to happen to each of these? Yep, and we can see to re-establish this to a higher value, it means this one needs to go up and these need to go down. So for that to happen, we know the equilibrium has got to shift to the right-hand side. And therefore it shifts to the right hand side in order to re-establish the Kp 
as being the original value. And whatever we've done for KP, exactly the same principle applies to KC. Okay, so we're going to move on to looking at concentration. So this time I've got a slightly different example. I'm going to put together the KC expression. Can we think what that might look like? And hopefully you've got that right, this time with the square brackets because it's KC. So if for this example we increased the concentration of H2, then if we look to see what would actually happen to KC. So if I increased H2 here, then again if the denominator is getting bigger, then that means that the overall value of Kc is going to go down. So Kc would go down because it's being divided by a bigger, bigger value. But we know that Kc can't go down with changing concentration. Kc has to stay the same. So in order for Kc to stay the same, we need these values to go down and this value to go up. So for this to go down and this to go up, it means that the equilibrium has to shift to the right hand side just here. And you can see there I've just shown the equilibrium shifting to the right hand side. So I'll just run through that one again. So if we increase the concentration of H2, that would mean looking at the KC expression that KC would go down because it's being divided by a bigger number. So if it's divided on a big number and therefore it reduces, we need it to go back up again. And in order for KC to get larger, we need this value to go up and these values to go down. And therefore it shifts to the right hand side. So we know from our work at AS that if we increase the concentration, the equilibrium shifts to the side to reduce that concentration. But we have to explain at A2 why that is the case. And it is the case in order to re-establish the value of Kc back to what it was originally, because Kc can't change if the concentration changes. We're now going to have a look at changing temperature. So I've written up a reaction here. Um, it's got a delta H of a negative value. So does that show that it's exothermic or endothermic? Yep, it means the forward reaction is exothermic if it's a negative value. And therefore the backward reaction is yeah, endothermic. Now, if I was to put together the expression for this, what would it look like? And hopefully we got that right. So for this one, with Kc it and Kp, they both change, the values both change with changing temperature. And it depends if the temperature goes up or down, or whether it's an exothermic or endothermic reaction as to which direction it changes in. So what I'm going to run through here is just a way I find of remembering which way is it going to change. So we know that if it's an exothermic reaction and I put extra heat to it, it's going to favour the backwards reaction, the endothermic direction. So if I increase the temperature for this, the backwards reaction is favoured, therefore it shifts to the left and therefore the concentration of SO3 is going to go down. And again, if it shifts to the left, the concentration of SO2 is going to go up, and the concentration of the O2 is going to go up. So overall, the value of Kc is going to go down. So why does it go down? Because this value is going down and this value is going up. It doesn't, the stoichiometry actually is making no difference whatsoever because they're both going in the same direction. So this value at the end of the day is going to get a lot smaller. Therefore, Kc in this situation is going to reduce. 
And if I was to run through the example of an endothermic reaction, because this is a positive um, energy change, then the first thing I've got to do is put together Kc. So what do we think Kc is going to be? And hopefully that one was right as well. So if we increase the temperature for this, we know temperature favours the forward reaction, and therefore what actually is going to happen to these values? Well, the concentration of the NO is going to go up. The concentration of both of these is going to go down. These again are both of these changes are going to make Kc get even yeah, bigger. And Kc can get bigger when it changes with temperature. And therefore, in this situation where it's an endothermic reaction and I increase the temperature, Kc is going to get bigger. And the last thing just to touch on is that if we have a catalyst in the reaction, does Kc change? And the answer to that is no, because Kc, the uh, equilibrium position doesn't change with a catalyst. The reaction goes faster, goes faster in both directions actually, but the equilibrium position itself doesn't change at all.